I will get off soon. Could you please help me get my suitcase from the top shelf? The brown one over there? A nice elderly lady asked Liam, pointing to the luggage shelf with her finger. Hearing an elderly lady address him, Liam involuntarily smiled. Sure, always glad to help. He put the envelope with the letter on the table, vigorously rose to his feet, and took the suitcase from the top shelf. After handing the suitcase to the owner and hearing the words of gratitude from this lady, the boy returned to his place by the window. Sitting down so that more light fell on the envelope in his hands, he pulled out a long letter. Several sheets were written in the large handwriting of his father, Benjamin, and this was the fourth or maybe even fifth time Liam had read the lines. The boy was not sentimental by nature. He had been brought up a real man, capable of surviving in the woods if he had to. However, while serving in the army so far away from home, everything was perceived more emotionally. The separation from his dearest and closest person, his father, seemed very painful to the soldier. Father and son had always been very close. Liam's mother died in childbirth, leaving the infant in her husband's arms. Benjamin, who lost his beloved wife and found his heir on the same day, had a difficult time. At first, Liam's grandmother, Benjamin's mother, helped with the child, but soon she gave up her soul to God as well. So when Liam was almost three, Benjamin was raising his son alone, doing everything possible for his well-being. He was a good father, attentive, caring, moderately strict, and sincerely loving his son. No wonder they became so close. Now, Liam ran his eyes over the lines he had learned by heart. His father wrote about everything, neighbors, his job, news from their village. Liam, when you get back home from the army, you'll help me around the house, wrote Benjamin, who obviously missed his son. Our steam bath needs fixing. The roof is all screwed up. We'll go fishing with you at the river. Last summer, I caught so many buckets of fish that there was enough for everyone in the village. Not only did the man make plans, but he also shared more intriguing information. You know, Liam, I have more news for you. I met a woman, Charlotte. She's so caring. I'm too old to go out on dates. So, I asked her to move into our house. She said yes. I hope you two will get along. Liam's lips stretched into a smile again. His father's handwriting was changing at this point, as if he was worried about how his son would take such news. But he was worried in vain. Liam was sincerely happy for his father. His father had been lonely all his life, devoting his entire life to raising a child. And at first, he couldn't forget his mother, Hannah. And then, the relationships just didn't work out. Liam thought it was about time for his father to start a relationship because they had a big house and a solid farm and the whole village envied them. A woman's touch could certainly brighten up their home and bring a special coziness to it. Let Charlotte make him delicious breakfast and give him love and affection. Moreover, Liam himself was not going to spend his entire life with his father. He planned to move to the big city. It was wonderful that now he had someone to leave his father's well-being to. And he had no doubt that he would like Charlotte. Dad wouldn't date a scoundrel. I am proud of you, and I miss you, son. Your daddy. Those were the warm words that ended the long letter. Liam sighed and looked out the train window. It seemed to him as if the sky had become even more blue and clear. The leaves on the trees were so lush and bright. This was his homeland, the place where he was born and grew up, the home village where the air was sweeter. All the way to his house, Liam walked, picking up dust on his army boots. He wanted to taste this walk back to his home, his homecoming. A smile never left the boy's face. 
A handsome brunette in a beautiful parade uniform often caught the eyes of passers-by. Such attention only put him in a good mood and made him straighten his shoulders. They say that joy and sorrow walk side by side and sometimes hold hands. So, the happy boy unexpectedly had to experience grief. So much that Liam almost suffocated in his own despair. Liam, is that you? A neighbor greeted the boy. So you're back, soldier. Yes, I'm back. Glad to see you. Liam smiled broadly. The man rushed toward him with a big hug. He had always been close to their family. Liam had grown up before his eyes. After hugging the young soldier, the neighbor suddenly became despondent. He looked at Liam's house, which Liam was impatient to get into, and then sighed heavily. Hey, Liam. The man grimaced, looking at the boy with some pain in his eyes. How could that happen? Liam frowned, not understanding the strange change of mood of the perpetually cheerful man. What happened? Worried Liam. Did something happen to you? Is everything all right with your family? You don't know yet, do you? The neighbor looked at the boy dumbfoundedly and averted his look. Oh. The man hesitantly scratched at the weak old stubble on his face. He opened his mouth to reply, but then the door to the Blackwoods house swung open. Liam was all straightened up, expecting to meet his father. But there was a woman's figure in the doorway, dressed in all black. Looking at the stranger, Liam realized that she must be Charlotte. She was strangely dressed, the way we only dress for funerals. Are you Liam? The woman approached the boy first. I'm Charlotte. Your father must have told you about me. We got married not long ago. Liam nodded, but he didn't know about the wedding. Yeah, it's nice to meet you. But where's my dad? Liam took a step toward the house, but Charlotte stopped him by grabbing his sleeve. The boy looked at the woman incomprehensively. Her lips quivered and her eyes filled with tears. Liam, Benjamin's been waiting for you, waiting so long, but he didn't make it. We buried your father, the woman said in a sorrowful tone, sobbing. There's a funeral yesterday. The woman let go of Liam, wiping away her tears. Liam looked at Charlotte with a frown. He could hear every word, but he refused to believe it. His father couldn't be dead. It was nonsense. What? Buried? He questioned muffledly, feeling the ground slipping from under his feet. His heart failed, Charlotte explained, sniffing a reddened nose. The doctors tried to save Benjamin, but they couldn't. Life decided so. Uncle Jack, an unwilling witness to the scene, coughed, tapped the dazed Liam on the shoulder, and said softly, Liam, you know, if you need anything, my doors are always open to you. Be strong, boy. I'm sorry. Liam wanted to say something, or at least nod, but he couldn't. He stood staring into the distance, and everything that was going on still didn't make sense in his head. His dad was a perfectly healthy, strong man who loved fishing and hunting. Yeah, he could drink some alcohol, but very rarely. His heart failed? No, it couldn't be. Liam, not listening to Charlotte's limitations behind him, rushed into the house. He rushed through the rooms, hoping to find his father. After all, this has to be a stupid prank, right? He couldn't leave him. He'd promised they'd go fishing, repair the steam bath together. Dad said he had already picked out some new fishing rods. They didn't have time to do so many things yet. He couldn't. He couldn't leave like that. No matter what room Liam went into, his father wasn't there. At the end of his search, Liam returned to the kitchen and sat down in a chair. He stared at his father's empty seat with a thoughtless stare. Would you like me to take you to the cemetery? Suggested Charlotte, suddenly appearing beside him. He was buried next to your mother. Liam's whole body shuddered in shock. When did she come in? No, I'll go myself. Liam muttered hoarsely. The woman nodded then fussed and offered the boy something to eat, except that Liam could neither eat nor drink. Thanks, but I'm not hungry. I'll go. 
he said, rising abruptly from his seat. Liam was so immersed in his own sadness that he couldn't even formulate a thought. Charlotte seemed to say something after him, but he didn't hear her. Still in his army uniform, Liam walked toward the cemetery. He heard enough horror stories about that place when he was a schoolboy. Witches were buried there, and corpses pulled their hands out of their graves. The children terrified each other so much with such stories that they couldn't take a step toward the cemetery at dusk. Now here he was, going there to check on his parents. On his way, he went to the local store to get a bottle of alcohol to drown his sorrow somehow. There, he decided to get two bottles and some snacks. When he came to his mother's grave, he saw that the plot next to it was no longer empty. There was a fresh grave with a Christian cross, and beneath it a framed photo. From the photo, his father looks and smiles so friendly, so warmly, as if he were happy to finally see his son. At that moment, Liam let the tears flow. He fell to his knees, right on the ground next to the grave. His forehead rested on the cross. What have you done, Dad? Gone, not even saying goodbye, mumbled Liam, trying to wipe the hot tears from his face. After calming down a bit, he sat down next to his father and placed a shot glass in front of him. He filled a shot glass for his father and then took a sip from the bottle. Oh, Dad. He shook his head as his throat tightened with pain. I thought we were going to have a glass of whiskey together tonight. But I couldn't imagine in my wildest nightmares that it would be like this. William sat at the grave for a long time, talking to his father. He would either rebuke his father for not having waited or apologize for his sins. The lower the sun went down, the less whiskey remained in the bottle, and the less coherent his speeches were. This was the condition in which Lean was found by the local tramps. It was already dusk, it was hard to see anything, and it took them a while to spot Liam sitting by the grave. Oh, look who's there by the grave! One of the tramps exclaimed when he saw someone moving near a fresh grave. The other jumped up, crossing himself. Who's there? He shouted, but his voice wavered. Well, it's me, muttered Liam, looking at the uninvited guest. What are you doing here, robbing graves? The tramps looked at each other, but they didn't deny it. They really hoped to get something here. Why not? The dead don't care anymore. Why are you sitting here all alone like a ghost? Why are you scaring people? One of the tramps tried to change the subject. I'm not alone. I'm here drinking with my dad for the last time. Liam nodded at the picture of his dad. I see. Well, condolences. The tramps nodded understandingly. Alcohol loosened the guy's tongue, and he decided that pouring out his soul to the two tramps would be a great idea. So, he invited both men to drink his second bottle with him. The strange company got to talking. Liam told them how he returned from the army, shocked by the terrible news about his father. He was the only person I had left in the world, he complained, trying to cope with a slurred tongue. And I didn't even see him before he died, you know. I couldn't even say goodbye to him. They buried him yesterday. I just came back today. Liam sighed heavily and took a sip of whiskey to get through the tears. The company was already quite drunk when one of the tramps suggested, Okay, let's say goodbye. We'll help you. What do you mean? How? Liam focused his blurry gaze on his companion. We'll dig the grave, lift the lid off the coffin. If he was buried yesterday, the body hasn't even begun to decompose. We'll help you, and you give us some money. The man exclaimed. What are you talking about? exclaimed Liam, frightened. What do you mean, digging up a grave? Are you out of your mind? Oh, don't yell. Think about it. What difference does it make? There's no security. There's no one around. We'll dig it up quickly, say goodbye, and bury it back. That's all. Shovels are easy to get here, and it's a good deed. Your father would want you to say goodbye to him, wouldn't he? Said the tramp. Either the grief was so heavy, or the alcohol had given the desperate lad courage. But after about ten minutes, the tramps persuaded him to do the most crazy deed in his life. The work began quickly. The tramps got three shovels, and everyone dashingly worked with them. That's it! There's a coffin lid! Let's use our hands, shouted the tramp as he reached the solid surface. Liam cleared the back wet earth, looking at the brown coffin lid. A golden cross gleamed in the light of the moon. He didn't know if he was doing the right thing, 
but there was no turning back now. It was as if a sixth sense poked him in the back and told him to look at his dead father with his own eyes. Only then, he would be able to let him go. Here, a little more. One of the tramps wheezed as they moved the lid from its place. Done! Panting, the tramp stepped aside, giving the boy more space. But as soon as the guy leaned over the corpse, he cried out in horror. That's not my father! The boy stared in shock at a complete stranger's face and recoiled from the coffin. In that second, Liam experienced many emotions. Surprise, shock, anger, incomprehension, joy, and hope. He instantly sobered up. It wasn't his father in the coffin, which meant that there was a chance his father was alive. Suddenly, the tearful face of the inconsolable widow Charlotte appeared before his eyes. After all, she was the one who had buried her father, which... Together with his new acquaintances, the guy restored the grave to its former state. Generously rewarding the tramps, he asked them to keep quiet and went on his way. Liam returned to the house, but he did not show that he suspected Charlotte of something. He played the part of the grieving son and questioned his stepmother. Charlotte, tell me about my father. After all, he spends his last days with you, he asked during dinner. What do you want to know, Liam? The woman asked kindly. Well, everything. I'm interested in everything. How did you meet? How did you live together? Why did you get married without waiting for me? Liam asked with sincere attention. The woman began to tell Liam about their big and sincere love. But the more she talked, the more the guy turned gloomy. Why did she tell him they used to go mushrooming in the woods and bake mushroom pies if his father didn't like mushrooms? And there were too many such contradictions. And we didn't have a wedding party at all. We just registered the marriage at the registry office, the woman continued. You know, it's not decent for a woman to live under the same roof with a man without getting married. What would people think? We thought, when you return, we'll throw a big party to celebrate your return in our wedding. And that's how it turned out. The woman let out another sob, turning back to the window. But Liam was sure she didn't mean to cry. How did my father feel? Did he have a heart attack all of a sudden? A year ago, he was perfectly healthy, jogging more than I was. Does it ever happen any other way, Liam? The woman shrugged, beginning to feel uncomfortable with his questions. It's always unexpected. God chooses who to take away. We are powerless here. Both young and old die. Thus, Liam lived with his stepmother for a week noticing more and more that things were not right. Charlotte often left the house on various pretexts. One day, she went out to get bread, but came back empty-handed, too happy for a widow. So, Liam decided to follow her, and his efforts paid off that very evening. Liam, I'm going to see my neighbor. I promised I'd help her bake a cake, the woman announced, primping herself in front of the mirror. Liam nodded, looking indifferent. As soon as Charlotte left the house, the boy followed her. Good thing the army taught him a lot. When she reached her neighbor's house, Charlotte didn't even slow, skipping briskly past it. Liam smirked, convinced of his hunch. The widow came to the house where the chief doctor of the local hospital, Michael Miller, lived. Looking around, the woman headed for the front door and knocked. The owner of the house opened the door and smiling, happily let her in. Sneaking closer to the open window where the light was on, the boy began to listen. He got shocked when the distinct sounds of kissing reached his ears. I've missed you so much. The woman finally pulled away from Michael. I don't want to live apart anymore. Michael, I'm sick of being your secret mistress. I don't want that either, Charlotte, but be patient a little longer, the man pleaded. We're halfway there. We can't give it all up now. We just got rid of the old jackass. At that moment, Liam felt wild anger, but still managed to pull himself together. Without giving away his presence, he took his phone out of his pocket and with trembling hands, started recording. That's easy for you to say so. The woman pursed her lips. I'm the one who has to live with this strange son now. Cook for him, answer his questions. Don't worry about it. 
as soon as he leaves, you and I will get married. You, as a respectable widow, will grieve for a while. And then, we will pretend that I helped you to cope with the grief. And so, we got close. No one's going to think or say anything. Sometimes, I think Liam is suspecting something. The woman complained to her accomplice. He's always asking me about his father's health, about our life together. Never mind, he can't prove anything anyway. All the certificates are competently forged. I paid off the middleman, and they'll never find him in the madhouse, that's for sure. They're giving him so many drugs that he doesn't remember himself. The doctor reassured her. And if his son will try to do anything, we will get rid of him the same way. You already know how to put the medicine and food, so it's a simple matter. Liam gritted his teeth so hard, he almost turned them to powder. That's what they did, bastards! It turned out that Charlotte had been feeding Benjamin psychotropic drugs, and then they had placed him in a psychiatric hospital. They had faked Benjamin's death by putting the corpse of some homeless man in the coffin. The house and all the property now belonged to Charlotte, according to Benjamin's strange will, which Liam had never even seen. Obviously, all this paperwork was illegal, for his father was still alive. That night, Liam was at the police station. The head doctor and his mistress were arrested in the morning. His father was found in a psychiatric hospital. Liam, seeing the condition of his father, could not hold back tears. However, his weakness and muddy eyes from the medication did not matter. The main thing was that he was alive, and Liam would get him back to health. Hi, Dad, the son said in a shaky voice, but still with a sincere smile, he hugged his father. I missed you so much. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please make sure to leave a like, drop a comment, and please subscribe to our channel.